All right, good afternoon. This is the May 12th meeting of the Design and Project Review Committee. Uh, we are going to call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? I will make a motion to suspend the rules to allow member participation electronically or by telephone. Second. Second. Michael Griffith, please call the roll. <clears throat> Nyden. Aye. Curtis? Aye. Biggs? Aye. Keno? Aye. Vanetta? Aye. Uh, Tristan? Aye. Uh, not here. Sterling? Aye. And Griffith? Aye. Great. Motion passes. Uh, next up, is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes of April 22nd, 2021? I'll make a motion we approve the meeting minutes. Second. Second. Okay, Michael, please call the roll. I like the contest for the seconds. Knight. Aye. Curtis. Dane. Uh, Biggs. Aye. Kenno. Aye. Uh, Vanetta. Aye. Tristan. Aye. Sterling. Aye. And Griffith. Aye. Great. All right, let's do new business. Uh, motion passes, let's do new business. 900 Clark Street, preliminary final review. Sarah Lewis, applicant submits for a building permit for interior alteration and storefront streetscape beautification to comply with their approved special use for a daycare domestic animal kennel Dogtopia in the RP Research Park District. And I think I see you guys. Um, oh, let me allow share screen. One second. How about now? Can you share now, Michael? Okay. All right, so Dogtopia team, take us through what you're doing. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you very much for having us. It's, it's really great to be back. And uh, I do have a few people on the call just in case there are any questions. My attorney, uh, there's someone from the Dogtopia support office as well as uh, my sign vendor who's worked on the signage with me. So um, we started this last summer and we're really excited to um, you know, be up and running in a handful of months. Uh, during our zoning approval meeting, it was mentioned by a few of the committee members that our site was essentially dead in appearance and they would like it to show more life. Uh, we're located um, on a sleepy section of the street right there uh, on Clark near Maple, uh, right next to the train track. And since the space has been vacant for over seven years, there just hasn't been a lot of activity. So as part of our approval um, for zoning with the special use, we were asked to work with staff in order to bring uh, beautification activation to the facade and streetscape. So right after the zoning meeting, uh, we talked with Cade uh, regarding our initial design so that way we could understand how to incorporate feedback and make further modifications. Uh, then we've consulted with um, Michael as well during this process as of late uh, to incorporate for Melissa's review. Uh, additionally, I uh, worked with Gary to ensure that our window coverage is in line with Evanston sign regulations. And uh, because we're trying to balance, we're trying we, we're trying to balance the beautification activation along with the, so uh, the sign regulations, and also adhering to the Doctopia brand standard. Uh, so now I would like to kind of just walk you through some of the elephants, um, elements of the um, storefront just to provide a little bit of context. Um, and then we can take whatever questions afterwards. Uh, so the left portion of the, of the storefront um, is the location of one of our dog playrooms. And for safety purposes, this area has the lower opaque graphics in order to safely minimize outdoor distractions, um, which would, could cause safety issues for dogs as well as employees that are in that playroom. 
However, passersby are able to view um, the lively dog interaction through the playroom windows just, just above those graphics. Um, then I will move on to the center. The center of the storefront um, between the columns is the lobby area. Uh, there are a number of ele elements um, within the lobby that where we use uh, really good coordinating and vibrant colors, including some wall art, which will further activate the storefront. Um, and it will be viewable through those front windows because there's not a lot of window coverage uh, right now. And I have provided a couple photos in the packet. One is just a sample interior lobby and one shows the, um, a picture from outside of a, of a Dogtopia storefront showing that you can, you can see those colors within. Also in that um, center section by the lobby um, are these, these colorful bands and those are not um, opaque, even though they appear that way in the packet. Um, it's just because they were superimposed onto an existing, um, an existing photo. Um, but it will really provide balance while not blocking sunlight um, into the store, and it will bring people's eyes up to the storefront. Sarah, On the right, oh, yes. Yeah, can I interrupt for a second? So yeah. Um, yeah, just for the committee members here, a lot of the packet is their, their sign package. This is not under consideration for assigned variance. Um, we worked with Sarah to reduce window coverage. So what, um, what we're seeing is compliant. This is, we, we're not considering this for assigned variance. I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah, th thank you, Gary. I appreciate that. Um, and uh, so I will move on over to the right section of the storefront. And um, this area we have uh, an office area and then a display area. And um, so on the far right area where there's no window covering, that's where we will have a display shelf. And in within this uh, packet, um, there are two different options for the display shelves, as well as during our zoning uh, meeting, one of the committee members mentioned something about a dog sculpture. So I've also provided two example uh, photos of that. That is something that we can incorporate into that area. Um, as far as some uh, things that are not like applied to the windows, uh, the landlord property management has approved for those existing planters that are seen in the photo to remain in front of the store so that we can have a seasonal uh, element to the beautification. And also we have uh, worked with the landlord uh, and property management for the installation of a bike rack. That was something that was mentioned uh, previously. And so that will really activate the streetscape. Uh, I have, uh, per Gary's instruction, I uh, have reached out to Jessica regarding the uh, bike, uh, what is it, the bike parking regulations. And I will be working with Ingrid on the actual placement of the bike rack. So it's proper. Uh, I wanted to mention one other thing um, that the photo right now, it shows blinds in, uh, you know, behind all of the windows, but this is just because they're, they're there currently. There will be no blinds, they'll be removed during demolition. So it will be clear. Um, and I think that's everything. So, you know, we're open to questions or anything that you need. Are there any staff questions? I did have a question about um, parking and drop off. So as I recall, it wasn't in this packet, but as I recall, you were planning on having some spaces allocated in the alley for people to park in to drop off their pets. There, yes, there are, there are two spaces in the alley. And then, um, I apologize, my dog is barking upstairs. Um, and then we, um, coordinated with Cade with the parking manager that, really sorry, the mailman must be here, um, that there will be a couple of spaces in the front where that can be turned into short-term parking. And that's something that I will be following up now that we're closer to um, opening time. Okay. Any other staff questions? Sarah, can you explain what this will look like at night? 
Will the interior be illuminated? I, I don't remember your hours. So um, our hours are, let's see, 6.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and then 10 to 5 on Saturday and Sunday. And we, we typically do turn off the lights at night. Um, I mean, there's the option to leave the lobby light on, but like in, in the playroom, we, we would turn off the other, the other lights. I don't, are there, um, are there uh, questions about, do you normally have lights left on in the, in the businesses on the lower level? Um, my, only, my only thing, I remember it being significantly difficult to find ways to activate the storefront, primarily because it's, it's, it's raised um, from the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And so I think one easy way to do that is that it's illuminated, at least partially illuminated at night. I just, I fear with, um, with a 7 p.m. closing, basically, there's a lot of times during the year where there'll be people walking around and, and if it's not illuminated, the storefront will look very dead. Just to provide a little more context, we will have people in the store until probably about 1030 every night. So we will have lights on that late. And in the display area, I do know that there is some lighting, some up or down lighting or up lighting or something like that um, planned for. Uh, so that will be there. Um, but if we if, if there needs to be a little bit of lighting later on, um, we can certainly be amenable to that. I would say in the lobby area if that helps. Okay. And, it, and it looks like there's lights uh, on those exterior piers on either mm -hmm. side. So, there are. Which helps. Um, my second question, did you look at any kind of, I, I don't remember our conversations and if this was something that um, the management, the building management did, but any kind of like seasonal plantings or anything that you would do? We have not examined that yet, but that is something that we will we will plan to be doing in those planters. Okay, so you will do something in those? Oh, oh yes, they, yeah, okay. they're going to be full of, uh, I mean, they're not going to be empty. They're going to be, they're going to have plants for sure. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Do those planters match the other planters around the corner? Because those look a little different, right? I'm not sure. I, I actually. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it'd be nice if they met, because I know that the the group wants that things be uniform. I think they have like sort of black, larger. They do, because planters. there's one There's one just by Chili's, actually on Clark, I believe. Um, and those are much larger than these. I don't, I don't think that size could be accommodated up right by the storefront like that. Um, I mean, certainly a, you know, a different color, but, but yeah, those are, those are quite a bit larger. I wonder if you could yeah. find some in a similar style, but just smaller so that it would look more uniform. Whether that's just the color, I I don't actually recall what the planners around the corner look like. I think I I mean I think that it, this is this was not a retail this is not a, a storefront retail space but I think it would be nice if it could pull in what the rest of the that area looks like. I mean this isn't I don't, I wouldn't make this contingent our approval contingent on that but I think that's some some feedback to give because this was their office and not necessarily a point that they wanted to draw. Um, I think it would be a nice nice aspect to to update that with. Thank you. I will, I, I can certainly talk to the property manager and I mean, I understand where you're coming from and I think to make it uh, blend in with the rest of the, the rest of the shopping center. All right, any other comments or suggestions? All right, is there a motion? I'll make a motion for approval of preliminary and final review. Second. All right, Michael Griffiths, please call the roll. Nyden. Aye. Gertis. Aye. Biggs. Aye. Cano. Aye. Etta. Aye. Uh, Tristan. Aye. Uh, Sterling? Aye. 
And Griffith, I. All right, motion passes. All right, next up, 1730, I'm sorry, 1577 Naples Avenue, recommendation is DBA. Destiny Rucker, applicant submits for a special use for a tattoo establishment, microblading in the D3 downtown core development district, zoning code section 6-11-4-3. The Zoning Board of Appeals makes a recommendation to City Council, the determining body for this case. Um, I see Destiny's on here. Um, would you like to walk through what you're proposing to do? And this is the first, um, this, is, this is the first special use for a tattoo establishment that we've had. So welcome as the inaugural uh, business doing this. Thank you. Um, so it will be called Oliviganic Microblading. The business hours will be Tuesday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then Saturday, it will be 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. My experience, um, I've been a permanent makeup artist for a year. I do microblading, I do ombre brows, and I do lip blush. Uh, for my education credentials, I have my microblading certificate, my ombre brow certificate, and also my lip blush certificate. For the number of employees, it would just be one, which is me, um, Destiny Rucker. It would be one seat per employee, and it's also by appointment only. So um, I won't necessarily be in the location unless I have an appointment just because like, you know, it, it really wouldn't be a reason for me to just be sitting there. Um, I plan to take two to three clients per day. Uh, what else? For my appointments, the length of the appointment will be three hours for the initial appointment. For the touch-up, it will be two hours. And for the consultation, it will be 30 minutes. So every client will have to go through with a consultation. And for the consultation, we will go over, um, so the state of Illinois, the um, Department of Public Health, they have a what to know before getting a tattoo. I will go over this with each client. Um, I will also go through the before care instructions for each client. And before we start, um, every client will have to, to um, fill out a consent form. So that's for that. And that will just basically go over like health. Um, I guess like, you know, if people have like different health concerns and stuff like that. So that will be that. And then um, for the protocols, I basically just put, I'm sorry, guys, I'm like super nervous. So for the protocols, I put after booking an appointment, each client will receive an, a, a before care instructions to properly prepare for the initial appointment. There will also be a mandatory consent form that will be, that will be signed along, hold on, I'm sorry that will need to be signed along with the what to know before getting a type two consent form. And then after all appointments are completed, I will go over the aftercare instructions with every client. Um, and for my layout, so for the layout, um, let's see. So when you first walk in, you're gonna have the window and the furnace which is already right there. I couldn't move that because I guess it was a part of the building. Um, to your left, it will be the furnace, my working chair, which will have like another little chair for me to sit on to work with the, to work on the clients. It will have an LED light and it will have um, basically like, it's, what would I call it? It would be like a little, or a little organizer or whatever. I would just keep all my, you know, my equipment and stuff like that on there. Then I have my reception desk. So if I need to ever print out a consent form for the client or, you know, um, what else? Um, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> so nervous. A consent form or a before and after instructions. I can always print that out there and do like little stuff like that. And then on the back, I have my wall show. So like it just have like cute little flowers and like little organizers. Um, and then at the bottom of the shelf, I have like my Wi-Fi. I have my um, alarm system with Simply Safe down there, and like my cute little containers. And then on the back wall, I have my couch. And then where it says six five by two nine, that's my bathroom. And then let's see if I can I can't really see. And then on the back wall, I have my TV, my security camera. And to my right side, I have my sink and my closet. So in my closet, I have my broom, my mop. I have um, all of my like personal protective equipment, like my um, 
what would you call it? My gloves, my grade A hospital wipes to wipe everything down after each client. And, you know, just personal stuff that always keep my salon clean and sanitized. Um, I do have a back door to the left also where, you know, if I ever need to leave out to go take the trash or like an emergency exit, that's back there. And then also it's a furnace. I do have two large mirrors and um, two chairs where I would just do like my consultations and, you know, map out the eyebrows just so like the clients can have perfect eyebrows or like lips or whatever. And then I also have like a sitting couch and a coffee table, two ottomans, two chairs, and a nice little plant. So like if I don't want to sit in a consultation area, then I can just sit on the couch and make my clients feel really comfortable. And this, and then also for um, the ombre brows, it's not like it's it's a tattoo, but I'm not like tattooing arms or anything, just simply eyebrows and like the lip blush. So it's not really, I know it falls up under the tattoo and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm literally only doing the eyebrows and the lips. So that's it. Great, thank you. Can you tell, tell me again, how many people you anticipate coming through each day? How many each? clients, either consultations or for actual work? So for each day, I plan on taking at least like two to three people simply because it takes three hours for each appointment and I want to be out the salon by six o'clock. On Saturday, since I'm open from 10 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., I only plan on to do consultations. So, you know, that just gives me a little time. And if I need to take care of anything in the salon, I can do that there. But I don't want to overwork myself, you know, I just wanted to be calm, cool, and collective, and every client, like I build a relationship with them and everyone feels comfortable. Great. I have right, any a, other questions or comments? Yeah, I have a question. So I noticed that the front of your building actually has access just by stairs, which isn't really ADA compliant. Do you know if the back of the building has access where people who are limited mobility can get in? So the back, um, it's like one little step and then, but I don't have any, you know, people who's limited access. I don't have anything like that. But if somebody who's like, you know, can walk a little bit, like I can always try to help them get into my building as best as I can. Or if I need to lift them up in a wheelchair myself or, you know, something like that, just to get them in, I would, I will honestly help them. I think that um, this may be something you want to talk about. Are you renting the building or do you own it? I rent, a, I rent the building. I think this may be something you want to talk about with your landlord. And, um, and maybe, I don't know if there could be like a little portable ramp that you can move yeah. into place if necessary. But I think that the landlord really should be involved in this conversation. And then um, if you could just make it clear um, to your clients somehow that if they need assistance, that there will be assistance provided. I think that would be helpful. Okay, I will. So, Destiny, does any okay. work have, have to be done to create, is there going to be any type of build out? Well, is, are you going to have to do any plumbing work or electrical work here? No plumbing or electrical work is needed. So pretty much you're, you'll just be occupying the space as is, you don't, and just adding your furniture, et cetera? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, if that's the case, then you know you, you don't need a building permit. Um, if you are adding signage, uh, that would be a separate permit and a separate review. So just keep that in mind when you get to that point. Okay. Destiny, this Their is questions? the uh, Destiny, this fire department. Uh, I heard you mention something about you have uh, Simply Safe as your alarm uh, that is required to be registered, City of Evanston. So you would be calling the 311 Center to register your alarm. Okay. You open up. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. I will. Thank you. I don't. I don't have any uh, questions. I have a few comments related to the the special use. Um, the intensity is really low, which can be which can be good. I just for you to get locked into only having this low number of clients per day, I just, I think maybe you should consider what that, that number is to give you potential for growth. Um, and I would, I would give a similar comment on the hours of operation. I would, 
recommend that even if you're not going to occupy the space for longer, I, I would recommend at least or have it be in the record for the zoning board that they consider in the special use hours of operation being expanded from you know 7 a.m. to to midnight or 7 a.m. to 11, whatever they think is appropriate to give you more flexibility. In, okay. In, um, but didn't we decide? Our, I think on the on the in the code we limit the hours. Is that Katie Katie Ashbaugh? I think right. We have that written in the ordinance. Is it ten to six? And the requirements for the tattoo and for the ordinance that was passed last year or was it this year? Yeah. Whatever so it was, that... it, is there, I think there was some hourly requirement. Maybe Megan, you remember? I thought that I could have sworn the way it passed out of plan commission was that it had to have hour our requirement let me well it's i mean it's not important whatever the ordinance says stick to those hours and if they're more expansive than 10 to 6 then i think that's what you should include in the special use um in the same for the the number of appointments because if, that makes sense. if you say that you're on, only going to have three appointments a day that's going to be your special use permit. It's three per day. So, so oh, I see. to confirm that, it says um, operating out um, the limits for the hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. on any given day. And section 6 uh, 4 12 of the zoning code. Okay. So, I would Great. recommend 10 to 8, seven days. I think, I think it, that's a really good catch. And I would rather see the business permitted for the ability to be from 10 to eight and just that it would be indicated that starting off, it would have reduced hours uh, and traffic because I think um, it will just save everybody a big headache down the road as business grows. Sure. Ms. Ms. Rucker, does that sound good? Would you, do you, would you like to go forth with the prescribed hours for the for the or for the city code and then you can you can set your own hours you can be by appointment only yeah that the hour sounds hours, great as long as it's within that that time yes the hours sound great okay so we'll make that note in the staff memo that goes to the zoning board um, that you are going to that you would like approval based on that all right any other comments or questions All right. If not, is there a recommend? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion for a, a positive recommendation to ZBA with two conditions. Um, one that the owner uh, determines an accommodation plan for access of people with li limited mobility, and two with the expanded hours in compliance with the allowed special use. Second. Michael Griffith, please call the roll. Nyden. Aye. Gertis. Aye. Biggs. Aye. Give me, give me one second. Anna. Aye. Uh, Vanetta. Aye. And I see Ingrid Eckersberg. Aye. Uh, Tristan. Aye. Uh, uh, Sterling. Aye. And Griffith. Aye. I would just like to make right. one more comment about an accommodations plan. I really think you should talk to your landlord and see if they can assist you with this. And if they cannot assist you with this, I think it's a matter of something as simple as a portable ramp that can be put even to the back door if it's an easier access, but that you have a way of communicating that to your um, customers. Okay, I'll email my landlord today. Tell them the city was really hard on you. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you, City Engineer Larbigs, for that that tough iron fist. 
Um, all right, next up, 1731 Howard Street, Huda Shaheen, applicant submits for special use for a wholesale goods establishment, Montalimar Bread Company in the C1 Commercial District, Zoning Code Section 6-10-2-3, the Zoning Board of Appeals makes a recommendation to the Council the determining body for this case. All right, is there somebody on for, for 1731 Howard Street? Katie or either Katie Ashbar or Katie Bowden, you've been working with this applicant. Do you see them on the call? I don't know if it's an issue of somebody needs help unmuting. Yes, I do see the phone. They are on the phone. I'm going to unmute them. I try to. Which phone? Is, which phone? Oh, right at iPhone. It's like at the very bottom. And they can unmute, oh, there unmute we go. themselves by, Hello? by putting star six. Oh, you're unmuted. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon. Why don't you tell us what Sorry. you're going to do? Uh, my name is Rida Shaheen, and I do have, uh, I wanted to open uh, a bakery by the name Montilama Bread Company, wholesale uh, for the um, for the coffee shops, restaurants, and hotels. And we are planning on opening a small uh, window uh, hours, which between 10 to, uh, to 2 for the pedestrian to walk in. Um, our operation in the, in the back, it uh, operates between 6 o'clock till, uh, let's say, 5 o'clock. And then another cleaning person will come in and uh, do the uh, cleaning and we have another uh, person to do the packing. We're going to produce uh, pastries and we are producing as well. All right. Is there anything else you want to share before we launch into questions? That's it. All right. Staff, any questions? So similar to the previous applicant, um, is there, do you need to do a build out here? Is there a build out plan, any electrical, plumbing, mechanical work that needs to be done for your occupancy? It's previously, it's previously has been a bakery and I'm just walking in into the uh, old uh, bakery and operating there. Okay, so using the space as is? There is no build out. Right. Okay, um, okay, just keep in mind if uh, signage uh, would be a separate permit. If yes. You the signage, so that would be a separate permit and review. Okay. So how are you doing loading and service here? Like how do people come, I mean, how are, I understand this is, is there some, a commercial aspect to this? So how are people, how is that, how is, how are, how's loading and delivery handled? Well, it has a, a back door, two back door actually, uh, one for the employee to come in and one uh, double door uh, for the loading and unloading. And then how frequent are those those pickups and deliveries? The deliveries are doing, uh, we are doing every day, seven days a week. And uh, the, uh, the delivery guy comes in around uh, 3 a.m. Uh, load up his uh, products and leave and come back by 10. 10 a.m.? 10 a.m., yes. He, he leaves by 3. Okay, so, and then this is all taking place on site at the black and the blacktop parking area? Yes.
So I guess staff feedback on hours of operation. I mean, that's a pretty early with adjacent residential use. Um, have we received any comments or concerns from from individuals who got a notice about this? Do we know? Are you asking me these hours too? What were no, the I'm asking staff if they've if we've received any comments about the hours here for or the use. I'm just concerned. 3 a.m. backing up onto a residential. A, a delivery that's occurring at 3 a.m. may not be conducive to adjacent residential uses. Could delivery happen at the front of the building from a certain period of time, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. or something? I think that would be less objectionable. It doesn't really abut anything but commercial. And I, I imagine there is a lot of street parking that that period of time. We don't have um, uh, like a big truck. We have small van. So I think that Cade's suggestion is a good one that no deliveries would take place through the rear of the property prior to, I would say 7 a.m. in the okay. alley and that they would occur through the front of the property at that, at that hour, anytime between, I guess between um, you know, 10 o'clock at night to 7 a.m. in the morning. No deliveries to the rear of the property. Okay. Other questions or comments from staff for the applicants? I don't, I don't think so. I think other than that, it seems pretty straightforward. It's a former bakery becoming a bakery. All right. Is there a motion then? I'll make a positive recommendation to ZBA with the condition that there are no, no deliveries to the rear um, from 7 p.m. to 7 to 7 a.m. Second. All right, uh, Michael, please call the roll. Nyden. Aye. Gertis. Aye. Biggs. Aye. Anna. Aye. Vanetta. Aye. Uh, Eckersberg. Aye. Tristan. Aye. Sterling? Aye. And Griffith? Aye. All right, uh, goes on to ZBA. Um, and then just a reminder that the, all of these cases that are going on to ZBA will be held next, um, will be at the Zoning Board of Appeals next Tuesday. Uh, next up is 1555 Oak Avenue, recommendation to ZBA. Camille Halim, applicant submits for a special use for a cultural facility. Halim Time and Glass Museum in the R6 General Residential District Zoning Code Section 6-8-8-3. The Zoning Board of Appeals makes a recommendation to City Council the determining body for this case. Hello. 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 Uh, we are here. My name is Camille Halim, and I have uh, William Ing, our architect, and we're ready to answer any question you have. Uh, if you okay, want so why don't you just walk through what you're proposing to do, and we'll... Um, then we'll ask questions and comments go from there. Sure. Uh, we are the owner of two properties, the Halim Time and Glass Museum at 1560 Oak and at 1555 uh, Oak, which is uh, assisted living. And we are running out of space in the museum because we have the most magnificent collections in the world. And we want to expand the museum to have one exhibit area in the uh, that section of the 1555 walk we are uh, building the sidewalks like like this will be extension to the museum like uh, the staff will be all in in, in the 1560 is going to be one person here and whatever visitor want to visit here they just come here and go through that exhibit the exhibit will be completely separate from the building 
and uh, we're just going to use the emergency exit and the the uh, uh, that's it and we one story uh, exhibit area we're going to build the bathrooms in, in outside the building so we need to extend it over the foundation like you can see in the southeast section of the new project Is staff any questions or comments? Um, so the only modification to the building outside is just the small section where you're building the bathrooms. Exactly. And the sidewalk entrance. You see that when you enter. So mm -hmm. Uh, will be a, it has its own separate interest. This is the only modification. And it's a big room. We're just going to build these cabinets and uh, the display cabinet. And as you see in the, the round uh, desk for the employer, the, one, the, the employee will be sitting there, the reception. Okay. And, and opening the front door uh, with the, with the uh, uh, waiting area there, there, like the vestibule area. So this would be an addition to the building, albeit small, but it, this would be an addition to the building, correct? Uh, which one? You're talking about the bathrooms, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, the bathroom would be addition, yeah. The okay. bathroom would be addition. Because we didn't want to really take a space in the square because we have just a huge collection and we're running out of space in the museum. And we uh, love to have display all our collection. And I think our museum was so successful uh, not in Evanston, worldwide. Like we're getting really uh, name and in, in, uh, we have article being written about the museum in China, in Germany, in Europe, in England. We have one of the best collections of clocks and glass in the world. So, and it is really is all precious stuff. And we really have a lot more to display, which we would love to have that included, added. Where do you anticipate people will park when they're coming to visit your museum? No, we have the, when we purchase, purchase the, 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 the 1550 Oak, we own all the parking between Oak and Maple, a whole block. And these are all parking. We can, we, we have the, 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 the gardens here, but after the garden, we have so much parking there. And we, actually we rent maybe about 40 spaces to the YMCA like you can see it here so we have a lot of parking and uh, and and the museum really like like uh, the parking will be in, in in but this is not all of it we still have more parking right um that's the existing place. yeah yeah but we have some parking here in the west isn't it uh, where is oak this is oak. oh okay yeah you show it right okay okay So I realize that this may be outside the scope of the project, but there have been some issues with the parking lot to the east of the building, particularly the area that's rented to the YMCA because of the where the entrance is. We get a lot of people who are just walking down that driveway and then dashing across the street, not using the stop sign. So I'm not really tying it to this project, but it would be great if in the future we could perhaps work on that parking and make the entrance to that lot come from Maple rather than from Lake. Uh, I, uh, oh, you mean the parking lot now, there are entrances from, uh, this is Maple, right? Uh, this is no, this is, uh, well, this is Lake. Oh, uh, Grove. Grove. Yeah. Grove, the YMCA parking. Oh, I'm sorry, from Grove, not Lake. I, I said that totally wrong. My <laughs> apologies. Um, yeah, we just the people from the who park for the Y who are going to the YMCA don't go to the corners and they dash across and we've had a lot of issues with um, No, they don't. The, the 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 YMCA they enter from Maple, isn't it? Uh so the YMCA buildings here. Enter from uh, Grove. Enter from yeah. She's saying that they cut through the the driveway and across the street and not go up to the intersection. The people that parked in that lot. Oh, 
they go from here, right? This is the entrance. They park here and then they cut through here and then walk across. Oh, so you want to open another opening in 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 uh, on on Maple? That's what you. Yes. Oh, we can do that. Another thing, we have this lot, the one you could see, the one undeveloped. Mm -hmm. You see the one in the uh, in the northeast corner of the lot. This yes. is all grass. We can turn this to park if we need more parking. So. Okay. We have a lot of parking, and uh, okay. It. I mean, it's it. It seems as if you have an adequate amount of parking. Sure. Mr. Halim, this is Mario from the fire department. Uh, in the packet you submitted, there was a one paper, it's called a uh, City of Evanston Zoning Analysis Summary. And under the additional comments, there was a comment, something about uh, sprinklers, uh, because this building is attached or whatever, you would have to modify uh, your sprinkler system and alarm system. So uh, there was a question about whether you needed to or not. And I just want to make sure you're aware that you will have to uh, modify your sprinkler and a fire alarm system. No, when we get a permit, I'm sure we expect that you will require that. And we Correct. are going to put, we have to put a good alarm system because there are so many valuable there and we have to have a good fire system. So we'll protect the, 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 the collection. So we're expecting okay. that and, and, and we no problem. Okay, no problem. Thank you. You're welcome. So this is a question for staff. Um, maybe Michael or maybe Katie, you know the answer, but open parking isn't allowed in D districts, right? Open surface parking lots? Maybe Cade knows. Um, I, I don't know that offhand. Um, I think, I think, um, in previous reviews of this property for other projects, I think we've considered the parking as an existing existing use, existing activity. And it's legal non conforming. And had and yeah. have left it alone at that, you know, left it at that. So I guess I just say that as the as talking about expanding that to anything else. Um, we can't expanding it is not an option. I think I think I'm correct in my understanding of the code that open parking is not allowed in D districts. So, um, so we there there's not an option at this point to expand the lot. You mean the northeast corner, the uh, that grass area? Sure. Right. That's that is D D four. And if I'm if again if my understanding of the zoning code without having that section of the code open in front of me, I, I don't believe you can ex expand, add more parking to anywhere on the, that is part of the site that's not, um, basically the part that's west, I'm sorry, east of, you know, the two parcels, with one with the structure and one with part of the garden and, the, and a little part of the parking lot. And then everything to the east of that um, is not, is part of the D4 district, yeah. Okay. We have actually we have as of now we have plenty of parking, and uh, I believe that the whole area is is like we we offer some tenants like uh, Benson Bakery. He has he doesn't have parking. We he uses our parking lot for a few of his cars. So we got plenty of parking. We don't need any more to expand it for now. Mm -hmm. I know you Other have, questions or. Uh, are yeah, you have a monument sign for your current museum. Are you anticipating adding a, a signage or a monument sign on the other side now? I'm sure we're going to put a, a sign, some sort of a sign. Okay. All right. So just separate permit and review for that, for any, uh, any signage proposed. Sure. Just to uh, Johanna's point, I, I also think which Laura, Laura was discussing about the additional curb cut on Maple. I think that's prohibited in a D district as well. New curb ah. cut, I don't think can occur. Okay. What about relocation of the curb cut? Would that be okay? Or is it just that any change would be a problem? 
I'd have to look exactly what it says. I just I think it says that access to any parking can't cross the public right of way. Um, but we I mean, we can talk you, about that. you could move it a further west into the R6 portion of the site. <laughs> that is which would yeah, align with not... the alley, which might not be the worst. Yeah. Oh. I don't want to send a, a property owner through a bunch of hoops unless there's a an obvious benefit to it though. All right. Um any other any other questions? So I think the only thing I would want to say is that the front that front drive cannot be used for parking. Um, which one is that? At all. The drive off of Oak, the that loading area cannot be used for parking. Yeah. This is in front of the yeah, this is just for employee uh, patient uh, visitor to come on. They don't park there. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean it, it that may be by design. I just want to make sure that somebody isn't gonna take over making a plan to park there. So I want to state that on the record and that be a condition of the special use that there's no parking to be permitted in the in the front drive. The front can you can you you're talking about which can you have the drawing uh, the, the one our drawing submitted can you move that can you move it to the uh the, 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 uh, the site plan the site plan yeah i just want to sure. mike can you go back to yeah yeah this one too. Uh, this is not the new one this exists okay. right? this, is a, this is the site plan right so yeah, just, but our project has nothing to do with that driveway. That driveway is, 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 is it's an old, it's been there for many years, and I don't want to put the restriction in it to get uh, this exhibit area. I don't know what was the, the old the rules at that. No, I, mean, I think we're, you're misunderstanding me. So if you're going, if the, if we're talking about the, the driveway that comes off of Oak, yeah that area is, that is not I, I want a condition that that is not to become parking for people yeah but there are cars go through it and, and sometimes the employee park for an hour or something like this there i mean they, I, I really do not want to change anything in in the building because of this if you don't want to approve it's okay i will not i will not take it yeah i mean it just it just can't i mean it, it's one thing for somebody to park for a little bit while they run in and do something, but I just, I'm going to say, you know, the condition is there's no parking there. Yeah, but I don't want to change that. That driveway has nothing to do with the addition we we'll put. I mean, we want to put this addition and with, this is a big operation here. We have a lot of old people. They're going to come they're, they're with their uh, wheelchairs and things like this. And we don't want to put any restriction in this driveway. I, uh, if this is, then I'm not going to do it. Well, it's not that you can't use it. It's just that people can't leave their cars to yeah, park but, them. But you're living in a restriction. This thing is, is not going to be used for, for parking. And I, you know, like the policeman can come and give us a ticket. We don't want that. It's just too hard for me to do this exhibit to the museum and restrict that huge structure here. We have a hundred room there. There are a lot of seniors, a lot of old people. They, they need need. The, 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 the ambulance is gonna come and it's been used this for since 1950s. I'm not interested to change that condition down the right way. I'm sorry. What if we restrict it so that there's no museum related parking on the front truck? That's fine, that's fine. No yeah, I'm fine with that. Just as long as it's not, it's not, it's not people who are used, who are coming to that are going to be there for a while. Because I think the point is, these, this is used in a certain way to load and serve people. I don't want to change that. If if you can limit it to the museum, but for the King House, they can do whatever they want to do for the, with the seniors and things like. That. You can limit it to none of the visitors to the museum will use this driveway. Is okay. I can live with that. That's a great suggestion, Laura. Thank you. So let's add that yeah. as a condition. All right, anything else? Any other comments from staff or is there a motion? I'll make a motion for a positive recommendation to ZBA with um, the condition that no museum related parking is permitted on the front drive off of Oak. 
A second. There a second. Okay. Uh, Michael, please call the roll. <laughs> Naiden? Aye. Gertis? Aye. Biggs? Aye. Cano? Aye. Uh, Veneta? Aye. Eckersburg? Aye. Uh, Tristan? Aye. Sterling? Aye. And Griffith? Aye. Great. On to ZBA. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion we adjourn. I just want to give you a comment. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep, we can hear you. Uh, I hope that in the future, the museum will be so famous around the world that I'll have 10,000 visitors there and come back and fight with you to park there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I hope that's a problem too. I welcome <laughs> that opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Laura, you had a motion. To adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, see you all next week. We do have an item. Yay.